should we sign the, the volume? Yeah. Uh, I direct a graduate degree within the School of Architecture. And I'm not a security risk. Um, called Sustainable Environmental Systems. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to Pete for the invitation. Gabrielle, thank you so much for coming to Brooklyn several times and introducing us to RDM as well as with her to make us be here today for some reason. And all the other members of the RDM campus that really helped give us a wonderful uh, couple of days here in Rotterdam. And I would be remiss if I did not thank our sponsor and tour guide organizer, just good, all-around, wonderful person extraordinaire, and that's Arjun. Yeah! Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Um, great, so I want to talk just briefly. I know we're, we're sort of short on time today, and I think Ron will be able to uh, also discuss some of these topics with you. But uh, RAMP, Recovery, Adaptation, Mitigation, and Planning. Uh, this was an event that really started uh, in full force uh, in summer of 2013. Uh, but what I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about is how at Pratt we're turning it into a, a collaborative interdisciplinary model for how we educate uh, moving forward. It did start with Sandy, uh, but as we sort of uh, developed the program quite a bit, we've, we found a very nice model, so I'd like to uh, talk with you about that today. And um, you'll see underneath here we have our what we've labeled this trip, which is Ramp Rotterdam X. And X in, in English is sort of short for extreme, and our trip has been very extreme. We've done quite a few things, so, so that's been our motto moving forward, Ramp Rotterdam X. Great. So iconic image, Bo Sandy, um, October 2012. Uh, we saw images such as this one, an extreme amount of flooding. Uh, and there again is an iconic New York City taxi for those of you that have never been there. Um, here's, an, here's an image from Staten Island showing the destruction and a lot of residential properties. And these uh, photos are credited to Ron. Uh, so I think some of these photos directly post this one. Uh, lots of areas were evacuated and folks were unable to return. Some real devastation uh, in many parts of our, our um, city. And directly after uh, Sandy, there was a really strong response amongst our students. Um, I've met some really lovely students here at, at Rotterdam, uh, but uh, our students were exceptional in this moment. They really organized uh, with communities and thinking about people, and they formed uh, this organization that was called the Pratt Disaster Resilience <laughs> Network, or PDRN, and Rebecca, who is here with us today, was a for the founding member of PDRN. And Lisa. Oh, yeah. There you, yep, there we go. Uh, did a really great job just to get information together, to collect all sorts of uh, donations, uh, made several trips to the Rockaways, which was a highly impacted community. Um, just really a wonderful a wonderful focus on, on people post this uh, disaster. At Pratt, we talk a lot about issues of social justice and also environmental justice. I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with that, um, but basically there are certain communities uh, which have a greater burden, uh, whether it be environmental, when we're talking about environmental justice, or less access to resources. Um, so there is an organization that we work with quite a bit at Pratt, this is their logo, they're called the New York City Environmental Justice Alliance, quite a few of our students. Uh, have fellowships with them as well. And they did this wonderful mapping exercise in collaboration with one of our faculty members. And really what we're looking at here, and this was a whole study, but here you see a map of uh, the five boroughs. Uh, in areas where you see darker uh, purple color, that's a greater percentage of the population are people of color, okay? So in New York City, uh, a lot of the most vulnerable populations, so vulnerability in terms of flooding and climate change risks, uh, you'll see that they're encircled here in these sort of uh, um, dotted areas. Um, and those are areas which are actually most vulnerable to flooding as well. So really we were focusing on uh, vulnerable populations in terms of their sort of daily existence is actually more challenging uh, than, than for others. Because, for example, I used to work in 
section A up there on the map, that's an area of Pons Point. Pons Point has 16 waste transfer stations, an oil refinery, a sludge pelletization plant. These are all sort of environmental burdens that exist and that can actually degrade the air quality for our communities. So really, oh, why I bring this up is that I'm just trying to show that in New York City, we have a lot of challenges when talking about climate change. And I'm going to paraphrase uh, something that Ron has always said to me, which is actually very powerful. It's that post-disaster, um, we're pretty decent at elevating buildings and infrastructure, but we're really not good at elevating communities and rebuilding communities. So that's the message that I want to try to, to uh, bring to you about the, the origin of rent. So it's about people. So what we did at that is we got together with some of our faculty and students and friends that we had made along the way. Some of you might recognize Dan Wiley. Uh, if I had a pointer, it's the good looking dude there with the sunglasses on. Um, there you go. Actually, this might be a pointer. A pointer? No, I don't think so. Okay, and then also one of our professors, uh, Eddie Batista, who is also the executive director of the New York City Environmental Justice Alliance. At Pratt, we pride ourselves that a lot of our professors are practitioners. We teach in the evening, folks are working during the day, and they come into the classroom at night. Um, let's see, who else is in there? There's some students on the far right. This is a student, Rosa. Behind there, there's a, there are two gentlemen from uh, other academic institutions. One is the University of Hawaii, and the other is, Ilya teaches at City College? Yeah. Um, so it was about partnering with community members, community leaders, students, uh, and folks from other academic institutions. Uh, here we see our fearless leader, Ron, leading, uh, I think you might actually recognize this, this uh, one of your colleagues, Dizan. Um, and then this is, I'm realizing this is not a very good picture of Maya Wiley, but she uh, was the director for the Center for Social Inclusion, which is a group that we partnered with on, uh, on RAMP. And what you're seeing here is we led a workshop on innovative financing. So again, it's about academics. RAMP is really a partnership between community activities, community leaders, academicians, or courses. Um, and then we try to do a series of workshops, and this was last year, a workshop on innovative financing. Uh, and then we had speaking engagements as well. And this is a training that we hosted for a lot of uh, property managers actually on uh, a hurricane resiliency, uh, basically building structures that are hurricane resilient. Um, and this was actually a partnership that we did with FEMA. So this, this course is, it was developed by folks this is a long acronym, but the Natural Disaster Preparedness Training Center, which is a FEMA-funded center at the University of Hawaii. Uh, some of us became trainers, and we were able to bring this training to New York City. Uh, and we continue to offer that. So let me take a step back, because it's really about sort of working with community, but also uh, we're Pratt. We're an academic institution. So this is just going to paint for you a little bit. Um, this is our new website. I don't think the students have seen this yet. But, yeah. Oh, first, first glance. Um, so Pratt is a fine arts school, right? We've got all sorts of uh, jewelry design and furniture design and industrial design, but we also have this core within the School of Architecture, which has a 50-year legacy of community-based planning, in no small part due to Ron Schiffman. Uh, and so within the School of Architecture, here in these gray boxes, you see all of these academic programs. Two of them are represented here today, the Sustainable Environmental Systems Program and the City and Regional Planning Program. Yes, undergraduate architecture. But <laughs> so part of RAMP, really, was to take the, the vast amount of practitioners and disciplines that we have at Pratt and really provide an opportunity for us to work collaboratively in an interdisciplinary way. So in the summer of uh, 2013, we ran a series of courses uh, with, and, and they were all focused on one geographic area, and that was Red Hook. They were all focused on building climate resiliency. Um, and we had students from the Sustainable Environmental Systems Program, the City and Regional Planning Program, and the undergraduate architecture program, they and their faculty all working together 
uh, to provide community uh, with a toolkit, really. Uh, and some really fabulous work came out of there. Um, so again, some of our students were working with, uh, again, Wang Lee there and some others. Some really fabulous work came out of this. Um, for those of you that uh, were with us a couple of days ago, we uh, introduced uh, this Resilience Education Training and Innovation Initiative. Um, this is something that came out of Red Hook Summer. It's sort of our version of RDN. Here's some great work that came out of the Green Infrastructure Design and Build course that was also offered in the summer, again, within the Red Hook. And here's some undergraduate architecture work looking at public housing uh, in Red Hook. We also partnered sort of outside of the School of Architecture. We joined up with the Communications Design Program. So really, this is about academic uh, collaboration and partnership. And you'll see communications designers took a very playful approach to climate resiliency. Uh, and our community of focus was Coney Island, and Coney Island has a history of being a place for to go and like uh, ride the amusement park and see a circus and all sorts of things like that. So they were really uh, trying to engage with community to do some uh, climate resiliency lessons. So another fabulous example from the communications design program in which they were working in Chinatown and recognized that a lot of the elders that were uh, in parks within Chinatown would play these card games. So they took notions of climate change and resiliency and created this card game that they then actually went into the parks in Chinatown and interested that. So those are really just really briefly examples that I wanted to give you. And this mess of a timeline is really the heart of RAMP. So what RAMP is, is a collaborative effort uh, in which we do planning or school of architecture studios. And when we say studios, that's courses, you know, the courses that we that we teach and lead with, with our students. And we also offer a series of workshops. Okay? The notion that these workshops are open to students, to community members, to as far as our outreach can go. Uh, folks can come and participate in them. We've had workshops on um, uh, public health and climate change. We've had workshops on innovative financing. Uh, post climate, or I'm sorry, post natural disasters, and also this notion of setting up working groups. So, um, you know, having faculty members also work with community leaders on issues that we found that sort of have come to the top. Uh, Jean Dupont is with us today, and uh, her group out in the Rockaways is looking at. Uh, broadband technology and distributed energy technologies. So really partnering with community and faculty and students uh, and trying to push forward a few of these agendas through working groups. So we have them resiliency in public housing, uh, innovative um, in transparent financing, smart grid technology, and also public and mental health. Okay, so again, this notion of working with faculty, students, and community leaders to try to push uh, these very important agendas. Uh, and then the training and outreach, uh, we've done several things. Uh, one, the FEMA training that I showed you is one example of that. Um, okay. And I think that Ron will speak about this a little bit more, but as we move forward, um, you know, we've been doing RAMP since summer 2013, uh, and it really started out as a response to Sandy, and these are a few takeaways that I think we have learned um, over the past uh, year and a half of how we want RAMP to move forward. Uh, we'll probably stick to a similar geographic region. We will definitely continue to do workshops that are open uh, to community members, but are also kind of formed and driven by community members. Um, but really this notion of how do we develop curriculum around issues of recovery, adaptation, mitigation, and planning? How do we increase the capacity of communities to engage in conversations around uh, recovery, adaptation, mitigation, and planning? Uh, and I think this trip here has really been a great effort uh, in that. And I'm so excited that members of the community could join us. Um, it's really about a transfer of knowledge and an empowerment. And this idea of sharing the curriculum that we develop and also the lessons that we learn along the way. Um, so that we can hopefully sort of have um, a, a more robust environmental and policy discussion uh, within the city of New York. 
Uh, and with that, I think I'll close. And I'm happy to take any questions about RAM. Thank you.